This is NFL Live for Week 17. Here's your host, Bob Costas. Final Sunday of the regular season. We'll hear from the Juice and from Will in just a moment. But first, right to the business at hand. The final playoff spot in the AFC will be decided at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. It goes to either the Chiefs or the Broncos. Both teams have struggled. Most people would say they have underachieved. But each has one last chance to join the playoff field. And we go to Bob Trumpy to learn more. Trump? Bob, first of all, in the weather, it's going to be beautiful. It's sunny now. Temperature should be in the low 40s. So I don't think either team will have to worry about what Mother Nature might put on this Arrowhead field today. For the Kansas City Chiefs, a starter at running back we haven't seen in a couple of weeks, Barry Word out. The last couple of weeks with bruised knees, he was the leading rusher the last time these two teams met. But to the biggest factor, the Schottenheimer Elway situation. Last night in a fireside chat with uh, Marty Schottenheimer at his house, he said, look, every time you see us kick a field goal, I'm going to be shaking my head no. We got to be up by 21 points in the fourth quarter. He has done it so many times, we cannot allow John Elway to be in a position to Elway us again, Bob. All right, you can win the division. What a story they are. Back we go to the Broncos and the Chiefs. Essentially a playoff game as the winner sticks around, the loser goes home. Casey lives on the ground, but as we head out again to Andrew Kramer, lately we find that the earth has not been moving under their feet. Thanks a lot, Chris. In 1991, the Chiefs running attack was ranked third in the NFL. Now it's 21st. And the Chiefs' depth at the position, which was considered a strength, is now an albatross. In fact, Marty Schottenheimer joked this week that the solution to the running back woes could be to go to the wishbone. That way, everybody could get a chance to play. You ask the players what the solution is, and they say very simply, give the ball to one guy. I'm the Paul guy. Straight ahead. I think I'm a more, you know, fast guy that can hit the holes real quick. I'm kind of the in-between guy. I'm, you know, I can get outside. I have the speed to get outside. I can, I can go inside. Is this rotation of the running backs not working? Um, no, I don't think it is working, to be honest about it. I, I wish I could say that it, that it were, and it did for, for two years before this, but this year I don't think it worked the way that we would like to see it work. It's a... Uh a good problem for a team to have, then again, it will be the type of problem that can maybe cause uh, some problems, more problems to the team. With the three of us here, you know, I don't think I'll run a game ever get going. After starting the season off strong, averaging almost 136 yards in the first four games, the Chiefs' vaunted ground attack came to a screeching halt. In the last 11 weeks, the average per game has shrunk to 84. And for the first time since he joined the Chiefs in 1989, Marty Schottenheimer won't have a thousand yard rusher. If we had one of them that we were playing all the time, I have no doubt history would indicate that they'd rush for over a thousand yards. Uh, but uh, right now, that's not the way we're, we're, we've got it organized. I'd rather see one guy get in there and go with it. You know, it's, it's really hard as a running back to go in there worried about uh, if, if I have two plays that I don't get 10 yards on or whatever, that I'm going to come out of the football game. You can't play football that way. I see myself now running like a, ro a robot. I mean, I, I, I get so tight, and Christian gets real tight, and Barry gets real tight. It's a lot of pressure on each one of us. I think if we just had one guy and just went with that guy, I think I'd run the game would really, you know, really get going. I think their frustration is born of the fact that uh, we're not running the ball as effectively as we are accustomed to, and they each feel in their own way they can resolve that problem, and that's the kind of competitive spirit that you're looking for. Because the Chiefs have fallen behind early in games, combined with the emphasis on the passing game with David Craig at the helm, there are simply fewer opportunities to carry the ball. At least that competitive spirit hasn't turned into resentment. There's no animosity between the three of us. We've decided, we decided a year ago that it was not going to be that way because we do have respect for one another. But when someone asks me, I'm not going to lie and say, oh, I'm just happy to be here and I'm just glad to get the ball five times a game or whatever. You know, I'm a prideful person. I, I want the ball as much as I possibly can and they feel the same way. Two of the last three weeks, the Chiefs were held to under 50 yards rushing. They need a revived ground attack to win today, or their season is over. And according to one of the Troika, it could also mark the end of the rotation at running back as we now know it. I think this is the last year the three of us will be together. And uh, I really feel that uh, this will probably be the year that uh, 
you know, it might just be one of us here next year. So, you know, who knows? <laughs> Thing to keep in mind is that the Chiefs offensive line has been riddled by injuries. They've gone through four centers and four right tackles. And one final note, Chris, Broncos defensive coordinator Wade Phillips told me that they do not defense the run first against Kansas City, but they're more concerned about the passing game, although they feel that it's harder to play against Barry Word because he's a threat both inside and outside. All right, Andrea, thank you. Tommy, I think the Kansas City, a couple of their wins ahead at home against Philadelphia and Washington. NFC teams, I don't know if out of conference is a coincidence or not, but Marty played that game. Let's run up a big lead on him and, and let's get a win. Doesn't he have to do the same thing today? Yeah, I think he does. It's something that hasn't gone unnoticed by defensive coordinator Wade Phillips of the Broncos. Dennis Smith and Steve Atwater must play the pass first. If they catch themselves up too close to the line trying to stop the run, which they're both great run stoppers, then the Broncos could be in trouble more. Well, Tom, Marty's got a secret weapon on defense. Remember Darren McKell, their su uh, supplemental draft pick, Florida defensive end? Well, let's, uh, let me tell you something. They activated him yesterday. He's had some monster practices. It's going to be McKell on one pass rough side, uh, Neil Smith on another with Derek Thomas. They're going to try and run Elway out of town, Chris. Well, they need a new weapon. That's for darn sure, Mort, because it's a weapon that must be lethal. Because the lethal doses that John Elway has given Marty Schottenheimer throughout his days as coach of the Browns and the Chiefs, including their first meeting this year, is enough to make a grown man cry. I have great respect for the competitor. Uh, that's the one element about him that too often is overlooked because he's got, you know, fine athletic skills. But uh, no, I don't have any nightmares about him at all. Elway goes with a shotgun. Watson in motion, the snap almost hit him. Elway back to throw, firing over the middle, caught at the 30. Down to the 28-yard line goes Mark Jackson before they can wrap him up and put him away. Elway's drop, the late pressure, throws the screen and Sewell. 30, 25, down the sidelines, 20, cuts back inside, gets inside the 15, first down Broncos. Mark Jackson in motion, the snap to Elway, the look, the throw, touchdown! John Elway has just thrown the touchdown to Mark Jackson. To win it in overtime, ball is down, Carlos's kick is on the way, and it is good! The Denver Broncos have come from behind to win it in overtime. Boils down to this, when you get into a football game and there are evenly matched teams in this competition, the team that makes the plays in the end is generally going to be the one that will win. Denver second and five at the eight for the Browns with a minute and 12 to go. They showed a tremendous amount of character to come back the way the way we did and uh, but there's really no consolation when you lose. unreal when you look at that together as Marty I hope has not uh, you're at the first the drive you're at the last when they put you in the ring of fame those two touchdowns in the last three minutes that Elway beat Schottenheimer what, what is it here well, uh, Chris I thought the last one was the most impressive but I think there's a formula that you have to deal with John Elway possibly the greatest two-minute quarterback in the history of the game versus Marty Schottenheimer's running game which tends to keep you fairly close at the end but I don't think that's gonna happen today at least I think Marty will come into this game thinking I've got to be at least two touchdowns ahead when we get to the two-minute warning. I'll give you one weird scenario and only a weird guy could think this up. 
Brad Dom DeLuiso is now the punter <laughs> for, for Denver. The backup punter is John Elway. DeLuiso gets hurt. Elway back to punt, fake, bomb, touchdown. <laughs> that hasn't, I, I just throw it out as a suggestion. <laughs> hey, we had Marlon Briscoe earlier this year. Back